Hey guys, Chad with Carl Roman Medical Center here in the respiratory care department. Um, this is a uh, MDI slash DPI um, session where we're going to cover the various modalities of inhalers, how to use them, and then the different classifications of the medications. And the reason I'm doing that is um, here on January 8th, we are going to take over the role of um, MDI and DPI interventions. So we're going to start performing MDIs again. Um, we had to push them off. Had a staffing crisis, um, but we are back and um, uh, thought this might be a nice refresher. So we're going to dive right in. Um, I will um, be referencing this chart behind me, um, and uh, it'll kind of help us to classify what meds are what. And that's going to be important because um, a lot of times people um, are ordered on a duo neb, and they may be on one of these long-acting anticholinergics, so we're double dosing them. So you have to know what these meds are so that you can help our physician friends um, not anticholinergic the heck out of people. Um, we're going to start with a meter-dosed inhaler. That's a, a device that has a propellant in it, which means it's pressurized. So the, the med is going to, when, once it is actuated, the med's going to come out at a decent velocity, which is where this kind of comes in. It doesn't matter who makes it, as long as it's a spacer. And that's going to create some distance between the device and the patient's mouth and oral palate. Because if they just take it like this, it's most of the meds going to get stuck to the back of um, their oral airway. So I'm going to put this over here. Anyway, whenever you're ready to go, you uncap it, give it a nice shake, put it in the spacer, and then one actuation. That's a meter dosed um, modality. Next is the discus modality. This is um, usually houses um, Advair, which is a combination bed. We're going to cover that here in a second. Um, it's a dry powder inhaler. Uh, what you do to open it, this, and this will crunch a little tablet that is in here. Hear that click. Now that it's ready for the patient to go ahead and take a breath and to hold it. The rule of thumb on in any meter dose or dry powder inhaler is to take a breath. Hold it as long as you can. That inspiratory hold is huge. Um, and then I tell everybody, after all inhalers, have your patient wash and spit. Um, it's mainly for your inhaled steroids, um, where it can create some um, sores, um, but pretty much all meds. So I just, I just usually tell people, let's not mess around and just cover it all. Just a nice swish after every inhaled med. So that's the discus. This is the ellipta. And this houses many different types of medications you're going to see here in a second. Um, Incruz, uh, Noro, Brio, um, Trelogy. So we're going to cover those here in a bit. So here's how it functions. To open it is actually how you engage it. So we're going to open it. Hear the click. Little tablet's crunched and it's ready for the patient right there. And then you just close it back up. Um, this is a specialty device um, that don't really see that often here. Um, and it's kind of old. It's Spiriva. Um, and the way this guy works is there's an actual capsule that has dry powdered medication in it. And this little capsule is going to go in this container right there. And then once it's in, you drop the mouthpiece, and this will actually punch a hole in the capsule. Then the patient can take a breath from there, and then and you're done. <clears throat> this is a dry powder inhaled steroid called Asmonex. Again, kind of a more rare steroid, but the way this works is you take a cap off, and then this is a spin thing, spin and click. Patient takes a breath. Inspiratory hold, wash the mouth. So that's the consistent thing. Engage the med. Notice that there was some similarities here. You open it, click. You open it, click. You open it, click. Pulmacort does the same thing too, which is an inhaled steroid. <clears throat> the thing that's a little bit different is the Respimat modality. Um, this is more of an aerosol, um, and it's kind of unique because whenever this is a new start 
or ordered by a physician partners, it's going to come like this. And you're going to think, what the heck am I doing with this? Well, I'm going to show you. There's a little push button on the side here. You can see that. Push there. This slides off. <clears throat> now you're not done. In order to get this completely engaged, you have to use a hard surface. So I'm going to go here and just push down. Like that. Now it's engaged. Put this back on. Open this. There's the push button, but you have to spin it and engage it first. Okay, one spin in the patient's mouth and inhale. Inspiratory hold for as long as they can. And that's one actuation. This houses um, uh, Stravertity, which isn't really um, popular uh, here, but the combination meds over here, um, like Combivent, that's a big one. So we see that from time to time around here, Combivent. So um, that's just a uh, short acting beta agonist and short acting anticholinergic, um, which reminds me, probably should just roll this up here a little bit quick closer and let's go over some of these meds real quick just a refresher okay a lot of these on the top are short acting beta agonists um, so we get your pro air prevental ventolin um, and then we have a couple of long acting beta um, agonists over here in the orange run across here's your, your variety of inhaled steroids or anti-inflammatory meds the arnuities popular here um, sometimes we'll see a Pomacort and an Asmonex or a Flovin on um, occasion. Um, these are your long-acting anticholinergics. There's the Respimat, the, the um, Combivent. Um, then here's where we start getting into all of these combo meds. That's where we have long-acting beta agonists and, and inhaled corticosteroids. Um, so, but back to this real quick. So. You're going to need to know if your patient is receiving an inhaled anticholinergic because we do a lot of duoneb here and it has atrovent in it, right? And atrovent is an anticholinergic. So um, either take it out of the neb or don't do the additional inhaler. That's the key. That is what's most important here is that we're not double dosing our patients. Um, so like over here, these guys, in Inoro, has a long-acting beta agonist and a long-acting um, anticholinergic. So this guy and a duoneb, no go. So you see what I'm saying? It's important that you know if they're on a combination med, if it's an inhaled LABA and an inhaled steroid, you're fine. You can do your duonebs right along with that, no worries. It's whenever we start adding anticholinergics, um, long-acting anti cholinergic meds that start to get into some trouble. And then, of course, the bottom biologics that we won't, as bedside clinicians, generally mess with. Um, okay, hope this has been helpful. Um, hope everybody has a happy new year and uh, see you soon. Take care.